and I will spoil everything, every single part. So if you do want some mystery left with the film, you'll have to come back later. So I assume you've seen the film, or at least seen parts of it. And yeah, it's true. Electra shows up, Blade shows up, Gambit shows up, and a pretty raucous ride with mostly the Fox superheroes team up with Deadpool and Wolverine. It was a little shocking. I'm like, oh, wow, Blade is showing up, and he uses a Punisher bazooka. I'm like, alrighty then. So they definitely went for it and took it up several notches, right? I mean, we got the Fantastic Four Human Torch from the 2000s. So a lot of gutsy moves. And I will say I was really prejudiced in favor because NSYNC shows up and I love that number. I will not be afraid to admit I don't like most of NSYNC. I don't like most of Backstreet Boys. But I will be honest that, yeah, that is one of my favorite songs. And although I don't like the group, I don't like Justin Timberlake. I have to admit some songs from that album are my all time favorites. So them doing that musical number and doing the whole thing. They didn't just do it for like two seconds. Critical of the MCU and even critical of Deadpool. I mean, I really don't like the other two Deadpool films. I do recognize they're OK to good. They're just not made for me. I read too many comics. So this version of Deadpool doesn't work for me. That said, if you do like the late 1990s version of Deadpool, like the late 1990s version of Blade or the early 2000s version of Elektra, this will work for you. This will really work for you. So I think decidedly this is a 1990s kind of homage. There's a lot of music from the 1980s, but it's really that kind of era that they're really focusing on, the 1990s. And they are drawing a few things from the comics. I think some people are lying that there's a lot of allusions to the comics. There are a few, but most of them are to the movies. And it's very bizarre, even though they are alluding to the X-Men films. I mean, remember, technically, the first X-Men film came at the end of the 1990s. There's not a lot of the X-Men or even the X-Men universe. This is what it is. It is mainly about Deadpool and Wolverine. And so far as they are X-Men characters, we get characters related to them, but not much else. So that was a little surprising that it does have some parts of the X-Men universe, but not as much as you expect. So I loved it. I think this is a solid piece of cinema. I'll even say it. I think this is solid Scorsese cinema. Now, is it great Scorsese cinema? No, no, it, it's not up there with what Scorsese does when he's really great. But I would say it's a lot better when Scorsese's really bad or even mediocre. Like, it's like Wolf of Wall Street. Like, I can understand people loving that film. And I do appreciate some parts of it were really excellent. But overall, I just felt really lazy and stupid and pointless and just and I get it it's meant to be nihilistic but it, it just felt a little bit silly beyond a certain point this is not Wolf of Wall Street that is all style no substance this is only a little substance that is true and it's mostly style it is mainly the cameos right that's what you're here for and the cameos are well worth it they are well done however the substance is fairly small but it is there the characters don't really evolve too much and Scorsese thinks that's very critical I do not, but in terms of what cinema should be is exploring emotions and the mood of characters. It does do that. I wish they did more, but they do do that. So it is a solid piece of cinema. Is it great cinema? No. Is it good cinema? Yes. Is it even on par with the best of the 1990s? No, this is not as good as X-Men 1 even, frankly. It's not as good as X-Men 2. It's not as good as the first Blade film. This is more in between Blade 2 and Blade 3. So those were fun films. They're very stylistic. But they are fairly just spectacles. And again, I do like them. I actually defend them. I think the Dracula scenes with Blade and Blade 3 are actually pretty great. But at the end of the day, they are just fun, silly popcorn films. They don't even make sense with their own canon. And this is the same thing. This doesn't really align with the canon of Loki. They're clearly retconning things. I didn't care too much, but it, yeah, it does feel like it doesn't work with season two. But that is me. Also, where is Kang? And it's like Kang is just letting this happen. So it's just... It's going to raise a lot of question marks about where the other heroes and villains are. I guess they just took a holiday. Yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, the story is fairly weak and the villains are kind of pathetic. I think the actors did an excellent job as actors, but their dialogue and their scenes are just sleep inducing. It's like, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It would have been better just to say that Deadpool and Wolverine are facing a massive robot called McBaddy Daddy Bad Robot Man and... Or woman. I don't care. I don't care about gender in this case. Uh, anyway, they face the McBaddy daddy robot and destroy the whatever. It doesn't matter. So the plot and story, even some of the twists are kind of lame. 
they do work for what they're doing, but it's just an excuse to get to the cameos and action scenes and just have Ryan and Hugh just enjoy spending time together. Since that is what the film is, that is what I'm judging it by. Since this is Cameo the movie and the cameos were mostly well done, I'm going to give this a fairly strong That said, yes, uh, I do think it was excessive at times with the humor. I think Axel F. did a better job of balancing out the very racy humor with the action. So if you want really great action comedy, probably go with Axel. It's not the best Beverly Hills Cop movie, but it's a little bit stronger than this. If you want a really great kind of Scorsese drama, this is not it. This is more like a stylistic Scorsese piece, but with an MCU kind of perspective. Also, do I think this will save the MCU? I think I will go against the grain. I think it actually will. It actually will save a large part of it, even if it creates other problems. But that is my perspective. Because, again, the MCU just doesn't have that many good films. So having a fairly pretty good film in the canon now is like, that's going to raise the score. That's just being honest. Could you still put out MCU hate videos? Sure. But I think it is what it is. Some things were really not that good. Ant-Man 3. Um or Endgame Infinity War, and then there are things that are a lot better, like Multiverse of Madness, even Black Widow, as well as the recent Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but they never ever seem to really get beyond that, and this is the same thing. It's not a 10 out of 10 film, but for what it is, it was fairly well done. It is very generic, but it succeeded on its own grounds. It even succeeds on Scorsese grounds, so nothing to be ashamed of. Really fun, solid cinema, but Still not getting to great cinema, and that's the MCU Achilles heel, but it is what it is. So it's not in the Snyder territory of Justice League and some awesome 9 out of 10 film that we're going to study, you know, 20 years later. But still very solid cinema, very enjoyable, very fun. I do recommend it. 